Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Vitan, and for those who are close friends of mine, they call me Vitu. I've chosen to read to you a short mystery story from a Canadian author named Kenneth Weber from his book, The Best of Five Minute Mysteries. Kenneth Weber is an internationally best-selling author of more than 40 educational and general interest titles, which have sold more than a million copies worldwide and have been published in more than 12 languages. Now, before we start, I like to tell you that your active participation and active listening is a must because Kenneth Weber says that here's an opportunity to use your powers of observation and deduction to apply your detective skills and test out how well you can sift through the facts. At the end of the story, the author poses a question which I will ask you, which you can then answer in the comment section below. So sift, sit comfortably and listen closely. Double suicide on Midland Ridge. Especially in the bright morning sun, the red Jeep wagon seemed much too sporty a presence to be a suicide vehicle. It was a very shiny metallic red with roof rack and little plastic streamers on the radio aerial, mud flaps behind all four tires, and a gleaming chrome trailer hitch. The total effect said sports person, or camper, or hiker, someone in love with life and adventure. Yet sometime in the past few hours, the Jeep had served an entirely opposite purpose. From where he stood on a knoll just behind it, Francis Creamer could see one of the bodies slumped over the steering wheel. There was another he knew. The patrolman had said a couple. Lovers, probably. Young people often spend the evening hours here on Midland Ridge. It was a popular place to park, private, romantic, and just far enough away from town. Creamer walked down to the Jeep where several policemen were waiting for him. The ambulance attendants, fully aware now that any emergency had long since passed, had turned off their flashing lights and were leaning against their vehicles. Nothing has been touched, sir. The youngest policeman was speaking to Creamer. I've been here since we called you. Creamer nodded. You've got pictures of this? He had put his fingers around the piece of vacuum cleaner hose that ran from the exhaust pipe of the Jeep through a hole in the back window. Yeah, we got lots of shots, Frank. It was Zerlo, the senior uniformed man present and an acquaintance of Creamer's. Do you want to know what angles? Not now, Kramer replied. It looks like a pretty straightforward suicide. We probably won't even need what you have. He worked loose a piece of masking tape from the edge of the back window with his thumbnail and peeled off a long strip. They must have used a whole roll of this stuff, he commented, mostly to himself, as he ran his fingers over the tape that covered the edges of the hole where the hose fed into the window. All the windows were taped as well. So much had been used where the hose met the exhaust pipe that it appeared as though someone had joined the two with a baseball. Zerlo spoke again. Pentland here found them at first light. He nodded at the young policeman. We called the wagon first. This time he nodded at the ambulance. But then it was pretty obvious that this was your ballywhack, so you're next. Nothing else has been done yet. Oh, except the license check. He took out a little notepad. Vehicles owned by one Owen P. Reggio, 219A First Avenue. That's probably him there. Francis Creamer made himself look inside the Jeep. Almost 30 years as an investigator for the county coroner's office had not hardened him to death even a little. The man slumped over the steering wheel was likely in his mid-30s, Creamer thought. He forced himself to look closer. Whether or not the man was Owen P. Reggio, 
he certainly appeared to have died from carbon monoxide poisoning. The cherry red lips suggested that. The other body was that of a woman. Creamer could see her light blonde hair, but could, couldn't see her face or lips because her body had slumped off the passenger seat and partially onto the floor where it leaned awkwardly against the door. Though he suspected her lips too would be cherry red. He picked at the end of a strip of masking tape on the driver's door until he had loosened a corner then began to peel off the strip that covered the crack between the door and the frame. Do the tape on the passenger side, please, Zerlo, Francis Kramer said. But don't open the door, she'll fall out. We'll work from this side. Zerlo went to do his part. Kramer opened the driver's door very carefully. The silence of the death inside seemed to affect everything on the outside too. No one talked or even coughed. The birds seemed to have disappeared. A cloud momentarily blocked the sun, making the scene even more tense. There's a note beside the gear shift, Zerlo announced, breaking the spell. All the policemen, the ambulance attendants, and even Creamer began to breathe more slowly. One of the policemen came over for a closer look. I didn't see that, sir, the young one again. It doesn't matter, Kramer told him. They were dead anyway. He took a small leather case out of his inside jacket pocket, unzipped it, and extracted a tweezer. He handed the case to the policeman and holding his breath, reached over the dead man to pull out the note. Come here, he said to Zerlo. Look at this. Zerlo came around to the driver's side, where Creamer had set the note on the fender and began to read aloud, as though for the benefit of the others. <clears throat> Tell everyone we're sorry, but this is the only way. Jana, you would not agree to a divorce, and Merle and I would not go on without each other. Owen. Zerlo read it a second time, this time in silence. Well, that should explain the who and the why, he said to Kramer. With a half wave of the jeep, he continued, and we certainly know the how and the where. Now who gets to tell this Jana her husband has committed suicide along with his lover? Oh, Francis Kramer gave a long sigh. I rather think that Jana might know more than this than we do, he said. In any case, we had better talk to her first before we draw any conclusions about the how of this case, for this was not a suicide. The author asks this question. What convinced Francis Creamer to look for something other than suicide as the cause of death? Please put your answer in the comment section below. And don't forget, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. See you next time. Thanks for watching.